Hey everybody, it's Michael. I'm back again with another one of my walkthrough videos. And once again, I don't have a box to show you because I'm doing a walkthrough video of another prototype. And this time I want to show you Ale Erde or Fields of Ale, which is an upcoming game by Uwe Rosenberg. And it will debut at Essen, both in the German and English version. The German version is by Feuerlandspiele and the English version is coming from Seaman Games. Ale Erde, which by the way translates as Soil of Ale, so not quite the actual English title is an economical development game for one or two players, ages 13 and up, and it plays in about 60 minutes per player. So you're looking at two hours for a two-player game, at least for your first couple of games. For the theme, let me actually read you an excerpt from the rulebook because I think it really sets the mood. Arle is a small village in East Frisia. Today only the size of its village church implies its formal importance. In the past centuries, the area around Arle stood out due to its excellent farmland. It was said that the best flax of all North Germany grew in Arle. As the demand for this versatile resource grew, the local farmers quickly became rich. The people of Arle had a considerably better life than the residents of any other place in East Frisia. In this game, you can share the fortune of living in Arle with the flax farmers of that time. You can decide whether you want to participate in farming flux yourself or, as a consequence of the increasing wealth in Arle, meet the demand in other areas. You can grow grain, breed animals, cut peat, colonize the moor, or build dikes. You can cultivate forests, run a vehicle fleet, or build workshops and inns. Your biggest task is to build prestigious buildings like the previously mentioned village church. It should also be noted that this, and the rulebook also mentions this, is Uwe Rosenberg's most autobiographic game because he's actually born around that area. The full game will also contain a 30 or 40 page companion, at least that's information I found online, about East Frisia, which should also help you get into the theme of the game and set the mood. So we've talked about the theme. The mechanics are somehow familiar. It's a worker placement game and you have farming, harvesting goods and so on. I would say the biggest twist is that the rounds are alternating between winter and summer rounds and the action spaces are exclusive to these seasons. So you can't take every action in every round. And of course you have to take this into consideration when you're planning your actions. The prototype I have is in German, which shouldn't be a problem because there's not that much text in the game anyway and there's no hidden information. And of course I'll translate everything as we go. And then I guess we can jump right into the walkthrough of a two-player game. Have fun. Okay, I've set up the game and as always, let's take a brief look at the components. Let's actually start with the possessions of the yellow player and for red, they're identical. The yellow player is the starting player, indicated by the marker. Then this board to the right has three purposes. First, it gives an overview of the two different inventory phases at the end of fall and spring. And then these are travel destinations, basically these are neighboring towns which we can visit and trade with. And then this is our barn where we can store our equipment and vehicles. Then each player starts with three pieces of peat, four pieces of clay and four pieces of wood. And then this is the home board for the yellow player. Down here we have three moors. We have one already drained moor, so peat can be cut from it. We have two fields, one for grain, one for flax, a stable with a horse in it. Then we have two spaces that can already be used and everything upwards of our dike line here can't be used yet because, well, the sea is up here and if the tide comes in, it'll be flooded. But if we advance our dike line upwards to the north, then as soon as we have a consecutive line up here, for example, these three spaces will be usable. And then over here we have a goods indicator where we start with five food but actually we have two indicators for food four wool three flax two hides and one grain here in the middle we have a supply board and here we have fields the different kinds of equipment and vehicles textiles forests and different kinds of stables and each of these tiles is actually two-sided and it should be noted that for the tiles on the upper hand when you build them you can decide which side you build and one side might be more expensive and for the things down here, you can only get the site currently showing. And if you want to get to the other side, you have to perform an upgrade action. Another stockpile over here, where we have clay and wood. Markers with five textiles, in case these should run out. More peat tokens and the different kinds of animals. Sheep, horses and cattle. And finally over here, we have the big game board, which is separated into two areas. Over here, we have the buildings. 
and over here we have the action spaces. The buildings come in different categories and in three of the categories at the start of the game we have to randomly select some of the buildings that will not be in the game. So for example these are the small houses up here. In any given game there will be four but actually you can choose out of seven. Also for the first game, but I didn't do this, there's a special set of four beginners buildings which have effects that are not as complex as these. And these buildings are the only ones in the game that have any time effect. So basically, yeah, well, you can use them any time you want. The other buildings only have an effect when you build them. And after that, they'll just give you points and sit around wasting space. Down here, we have the small crafting buildings. We have two out of five. Then these six big crafting buildings will always be in the game. They're always the same. Then down here, we have three inns out of six. And then finally, three great buildings, which are always the same. Then on the action board, we can see that the game will go over nine rounds and each round is basically half a year. So we're alternating between summer half years, which are summer and autumn, and winter half years, which are winter and spring. And each half year has 15 action spaces that are exclusive to that year, with one small exception, but I'll talk about that later. So these are all the action spaces. And then in the middle, we have tools. For each tool, everybody has a marker showing how well developed that tool is. For every tool the marker starts on the left and you can take certain actions in the game to advance the markers further to the right which might give you victory points if you advance it enough. There's one sometimes two actions associated with each tool and the strength of the tool will define the strength of the action. So for example on the fishing space you will get food depending on how many fish traps you have and then you can already start the game. As already said nine rounds. We'll start with the summer round and each round consists of three phases. First in June we would determine the starting player and assemble the workers down here. We've already done that in the setup. Then in July through October everybody will take turns placing workers on the action spaces and then finally in November we will have a administration or inventory phase. So Yellow's first action will be the master and the master says that for each workbench that you have, and we have currently two, you can advance any tool one space to the right and you have to pay its cost. So the first advancement we'll do is actually for the workbenches itself, which costs us two clay. And now we have three workbenches and this is effective immediately. So we get three tool advancements. We already used one, so we still have two left. Next, let's advance our spades that will cost the wood. And finally, our shovels should cost another wood. So overall we have to pay two clay and two wood. And these are just returned to the supply. Now workbenches will of course help us build tools more quickly. Shovels have two effects. The shovels themselves will be usable for getting clay and then we can also look at pairs of shovels and now since we have four and not three we have actually two full pairs and not one. Those will be used whenever we want to advance our dike line. And finally the spades will help us cut peat. Then Red takes the carpenter. He can either build a building or a stable. He decides to build a building. He chooses the well vehicle or loading company. It has to go in a free space. He only has two of those, so he decides to put it over here. All the small buildings cost one grain and then any of the four different building materials. So he pays a grain and the clay. And this building will allow him to place peat onto his vehicles, but since he doesn't have any vehicles, we'll get back to that later. Yellow takes the dike builder. First he can choose between a cow and a sheep. He decides to take a cow. Now on the stable, only animals of the same kind can be held. You can have two animals of the same kind in any of the three spaces, and you can also have one animal on each of your five dikes. But for now, let's just put the cow here. And then we can build one dike for each pair of shuffles that we have, so we can build two dikes. Now building dikes is done in the following way. You take one of the dikes on the lowest line and advance it up to the highest line. That was the building of one dike and this is the second one. And now what has happened is that we've pushed our dike line one space ahead because now we have a consecutive line of dikes here. So these three spaces are now usable. The next building will put it here so nothing happens. But then the next one will put this one or this one over here and then we've advanced yet again. And if we do this three more times, then we've advanced the fullest. And also dikes five through seven will cover up these negative victory points. Red takes the lumberjack. He'll get one wood per X. He currently has 
three axes, so that's three wood. Yellow takes the colonist, he'll get a horse that he puts in the stable, and then he can flip one of his moors to the other side, which basically means draining it. So one moor is flipped to the other side. It's now only worth negative one victory points, not four, because it has been further developed. And then we have to put four peat on it from the supply. So now that the moor has been drained of the water, basically by building this little canal here, it is now dry enough that we can actually cut the peat. And once all the peat is gone, the moor tile will be removed and the space will be usable. Remember when I said that you can only place on action spaces of the current half year? That's not entirely true. One of the players can decide to put on the other half, but that means that the other player will be the starting player for the next round. So Red decides to go over here to the Vainbright. They can build both a vehicle and a peat boat. And this is something he couldn't have done this summer. He could have taken this space down here. It would have cost two food to build a vehicle. But in this case, the space is better. But of course, the yellow player will remain the starting player. So one vehicle. And basically, there's a selection of six different ones. We have the very simple ones over here, which are basically just wheelbarrows. And they cost two and four wood, respectively. And then over here, we have simple carts that are drawn by horses, and they cost five and seven wood, respectively, and a horse. And then we have the more comfortable carriages, which are nicer and give more victory points and need more horses. But they're not as flexible when transporting goods, and I'll go into more detail about that later on. Since he only has one horse, can't build any of those anyway, so he decides to build this horse cart. It costs one horse and five wood. So out of his seven, he has to pay five. And he can place it into his barn on one of the three large spaces. And if he puts it here, he covers up the minus three, which is basically a penalty if you never build a large vehicle in the entire game. And since the Wainwright allowed him to build both a vehicle and a peat boat, he can also do that. It costs him one wood. And since it's a small piece of equipment, it can go into one of the small spaces. Peat boat is worth one victory point, and it allows you any time to convert peat, as many as you want, into any of the other five resources that are tracked with the indicators here. Okay, what can you do with vehicles? As you can see, this one has three spaces. So basically there are three slots and each slot can house different things. So for example, both clay and wood can be put on there. That's actually the reason they are tokens and not markers of the other kind, so they fill up these spaces exactly. And this basically means that you take your vehicle, take them to the next village where they will be either cut into timber or burnt into bricks. Another option is to visit one of the neighboring cities and these come in four different sizes. So for example, with a card this big, we could visit everything except Bremen. And if you want to visit one of these cities, you have to perform at least one trade that is depicted on the tiles. And finally, since he now has the loading company, he also has a third use for his vehicles, basically importing peat. So he gets peat without having to cut it from his moors. And you can load your vehicles at any time during your turn. It doesn't cost an action. So let's actually do that right now. So first of all, let's say we want to have a brick. So we put one piece of clay on there. We can immediately flip it to the other side, but we won't get it until the end of the turn. And it has to be burnt with something. So we also have to pay a peat. This goes to the supply. Then let's say we want to visit and trade with B more. We have to take one of the trading options on there. There's only one. We have to give up a peat. Another one gone to supply, but we immediately get two food for it. So we're now up to seven food. Trading always results in food, and the nice thing is you get the food immediately. And then we have one space left, so let's actually use the special ability of our loading company. We can take one peat from the supply, put it on there, and then at the end of the round, when we're unloading our vehicles, we'll get that peat. Yellow takes the peat cutter. You can cut one peat for each spade that you have. He has five spades. So he cuts four, five peat. And since all the peat is gone from this moor tile, it's removed and he has a new space that can be used normally. And he also got rid of the minus three points. And finally red takes the forest out. It costs the food to actually enter the space. So he's down to six. And then he can either build a building or get one forest. He wants a forest. And he has to put it here because this is the last empty space. Now we're into the November inventory phase. And here first we unload our vehicles. Yellow doesn't have any vehicles, but red does. So he gets back the clay so he can use it next round. He gets the peat 
And finally, he has successfully visited BMO. So it is put on his travel experience track over here. And the more places you visit during the game, and yes, larger places give you more experience, the more victory points you will get. So if he visits another one of the small cities, he'll actually get one victory point. Then the card is empty and can be used again in the next round. Then animals can be milked. Nobody has any sheep yet, but yellow has one cow. So that gives him one food. Then the fields and forests produce. So yellow gets a grain and a flax. Same for red. But he also gets a wood from his forest. Then we have the feeding or sustenance phase. Each player has to give up three food. Since winter is coming, we have to heat by paying two peat. Red has exactly that because he imported another one. And yellow has enough. Now, if you weren't able to pay food, you could substitute this with grain. And if you don't have any grain, you could substitute it with animals. The same for the peat. If you don't have any peat, you could pay wood. If you can't pay it all, then you have to take minus two victory points for each good that you can't supply. Then it's already the end of the round, so we advance into round number two, which will be a winter round, of course. Then in December, we put the workers back here. Since red took a action in the other half here, yellow will remain the starting player. So red's markers will be at the bottom again, and yellow's will be on top, and then yellow can take his first action. Yellow decides to visit the trader which gives a bunch of everything. He can cut one peat, get an animal of his choice. He decides to take another cow, and then he gets a piece of wood and a piece of clay. Red takes the master. He first advances the workbenches. He advances his ovens. Advancing the oven costs him one brick, but he had one made last turn, so that's fine. And then he also takes his spades. So overall, that's one wood, two clay, and one brick. Yellow decides he needs another stable while he has enough space to hold all his animals. Animals will only breed if they are in a stable. So he decides to take the carpenter, which would either allow him to upgrade a stable into a bigger one. And the bigger ones hold six animals of the same kind, but that's not what he wants. He wants really another stable. So that's this option. So two clay and one grain. And he puts it here and immediately moves the cows in there. Red visits the peat supplier. He'll get three peat plus an additional one per peat boat. So that's four peat from the supply. Yellow visits the wood trader. It costs the food. And then he gets four wood or can build a building. He decides to get the four wood. Red first uses his peat boat to trade a peat for a grain, and then he visits the baker, where he can, for each oven, and he has two, convert one grain and one peat into six food. So for two grain and two peat, he'll get 12 food. So this one goes from three to 15. Yellow visits the animal trader. He gets two grain, a sheep, and then a choice of cow or horse. He decides to take another horse. He could put it in the stable, but these two want to be undisturbed for later on. Red decides to take the dike warden. He can perform one upgrade action and he can build one dike. So let's do that one first. This one simply moves up here, so he now also has three new spaces. And then he can upgrade any tile that has one of these arrow icons. So he could make this stable into a depot, but the depot can't house animals and it's only interesting towards the end of the game. He could upgrade the forest to a park, but then it would no longer provide wood. He could drain a moor, but he still has peat to cut. He could upgrade the peat boat to a plow. Also not interesting because he still wants to use his effect. So what he decides to do is upgrade the horse cart. And as we see, it's now worth one victory point more. And doing it this way saved him to wood, but on the other hand, upgrading from this to this cost him an action. And now we should actually use the cart. So this piece of wood is made into timber. Now he can't visit Donald because there he would have to give up a plow. He could visit Hage, but he would have to give up one of his fields and it's too early for that. He could give up his peat boat to visit Norden because he doesn't have clothing or sheep. Also not that interesting. So what he actually decides to do is import three peat. 
Then we have our May inventory, where we first unload the vehicle. Then animals will breed. If there's place in a stable and there are at least two animals, those two animals will breed. So we'll get another horse and another cow down here. Then sheeps can be sheared for wool. One sheep will give one wool. So the yellow player will receive one wool. And then we are feeding, but no heating, because it's summer now. Yellow only has two food, so he also has to give up one grain. And red can pay a three food without a problem. Then it's round three in June. We place the workers. Nobody placed into the other half here, so the starting player simply switches over to the red player. And then we can start again. Red takes the lumberjack, so he gets three wood. Yellow takes the wing right. First he builds a peat boat for one wood and he decides to get a carriage which costs him four wood and two horses. Red takes the clay digger, one clay per shovel, he has three. Yellow takes the farmer, he can build a plow which costs him a wood and then either a cow or a horse, he decides to give up yet another horse. And then he can get one new field per plow. And he decides for another grain field. Red takes the master. So he gets three tool improvements. First he pays to clay. And then he still has three. And he takes axes, shovels and spades. Yellow takes the carpenter. He wants to build a building. The schnapps distillery costs a building material and a grain. So let's put it here, pay a grain and a clay. And from now on, whenever he wants, he can exchange one grain and one peat for three food. Red takes the colonist, he gets a horse, he can drain a moor tide. Then he still has his cart left. He decides to put one clay on it. Then he decides to visit and trade with Aesons. He can give up two hides for two food. And this was one too many, it should have only paid one. And if he trades two peat into two grain first, then he can give up those two for a total of six food. So this one moves up to 15 and this one up to three. And finally he imports another peat. Finally yellow takes the fish, he gets a sheep. He can increase his fish traps by one for free, so he doesn't have to pay the wood. You only have to pay these costs when you do this via the master and the workbenches. And then he gets one food per fish trap, so three. Then he also has his vehicle. And the thing is, the ones with the double spaces are less flexible. And so he decides to put this wood on them, make it into timber, and also visit Aesons, so he gives up one hide, and then one grain, and another grain for six food. Then it's the end of autumn, first we unload the vehicles. Then animals give milk, the red player doesn't get anything. The yellow player has two sheep and three cattle, so that's a total of three food. Then harvest. Yellow gets two grain and a flax. Red gets one of each, including a wood. And then we have to pay food and peat. And then we can move into round number four. And red will still be the starting player. Red decides to take a summer action immediately. He takes a peat cutter. Gets to cut seven peat, four from here, three from here. So this is gone. Yellow decides to visit the wood supplier. He has to pay a food and then takes four wood. Red takes the building material supplier. He gets two skins. Then first choice of wood or clay and he takes a wood and then he can either get a timber or a brick and he takes a brick. Yellow takes the trader. So he gets to cut one peat, get any one animal, takes a horse, and then he gets a wood and a clay. Red uses the seasonal worker, costs two food, 
and either allows to imitate another space or to build a building. He wants to build a building. The weaving parlor. It costs two brick. And then either ten flax or wool. He decides to pay flax. He has five. And he can pay the other five in peat. Puts it down here. It'll be worth seven points. He immediately gets a woolen set of clothes. And he can increase his looms by two. Yellow takes the Wainwright. He decides to build a new peat bolt for one wood. Then he can also buy a new vehicle. He decides to go with this very basic cart, which costs him two wood. Red visits the animal breeder, gets two grain, a sheep and a horse. He decides to visit Norden. Now he can give up one set of wool clothing for seven food. And then he decides to fill the other two spaces with these pieces of wood so they can be made into timber. Yellow would have really liked to build a stable for the sheep so they could breed, but he's missing one piece of clay and he missed the opportunities to get to the building material supplier or to imitate him so he can't build a stable. So he first gives up to Pete to get two animal skins. And then he selects the tanner, so he can turn one animal skin into a leather for each of his flashing beams. So that's three. And then he gets a three leather. Then his vehicles. First, um, you can always rearrange the vehicles and since there's a spot for a small vehicle down here. Now he could use all the space in here to turn the leather into leather clothing. But for now, let's visit Aurich. So he can give up one piece of leather for four food, a horse, which he doesn't want to do, but then any animal for four. So he gives up one of the, these cows. So that's a total of eight food. Then he decides to put one wood on here and one clay on here. And so he has to pay a peat. Then it's the end of the round. First vehicle is unloaded. This gets put over here. Next animals breed. So the red player will get another horse. And the yellow player decided to leave things as they are. So it also gets a horse and a cow. Then wool from sheep. Both have less than four sheep, so that's one wool. And finally everybody has to pay three food. And then we can move into round number five. Red took an action in the other year, so yellow will be the starting player again. Yellow takes the colonist. He gets a horse and can flip this more. Red takes the clay worker, so he gets four clay, one per shovel. Yellow cuts peat, he gets five, which is basically everything. So these two are now usable. Red decides to take a winter action, so he gets three plus one, four peat. Yellow takes the farmer, he can build a plow, costs him one wood, and either horse or a cow takes a horse and then he gets one new field per plow he has two and he decides to get one grain and one flax field red takes the lumberjack so he gets four wood yellow selects a carpenter he wants to build a building he decides to go with the mill it costs the timber and then either eight flax or grain he only has five flax but he can pay three peat on top of that and the mill goes here and depending on how many fields he has and he has five he gets food immediately, so that's 10 food. So that's 7 and another 3. And since he doesn't have any building materials to refine, he decides to use this card to turn a leather into leather clothing and this card down here to visit Bemor. Costs him a peat, but gives him 2 food. And finally Red selects the wool weaver. He can turn one wool into one wool fabric for each loom. He has four looms. Then he still has his vehicle to use. He wants three pieces of clay turned into bricks. So that's three peat. And then for the last space he decides to import one peat. Then it's November, so we can do our inventorying. First you unload the vehicles. This one is put over here, milking the animals. Red doesn't get anything. Yellow has two sheep and three cows, so that's three food altogether, but he has to pay 
immediately afterwards. And it's the harvest. Red gets one of each. Yellow gets three grain. And two flags. Then two peat. Three food. And then we can move into round number six. And yellow will be the starting player yet again. Yellow takes the building material supplier. So he gets two skins. Clay and a brick. Red takes the baker. He has two ovens. So he can pay two grain and two peat for 12 food. Yellow takes the wood supplier. He has to pay one food. Then he can build a building. First he uses his schnapps distillery to get three food. That's one grain. His last peat. But three food. Then he wants to build this waterside estate. It costs 25 food and two bricks. And put it down here. So 15 food all gone and 12 food reduced to two. Two bricks. Then he gets 10 food back. Can build two dikes. One, two. Now these are all usable. And finally he can increase his fish traps by three. Red takes the seasonal worker. He has to pay two food. He also wants to build a building. He wants to build Berum Castle. It costs 15 food, 3 timber and 3 brick. He can increase his looms and his ovens by one. And then he can perform one upgrade action. He could turn the peat boat into a plow. He doesn't want to do that. He could flip the moor. But what he actually decides is to make the forest into a park, which is now worth six victory points, and can house two animals of the same or different kinds. Yellow takes the trader. He can't cut peat at the moment, but he gets a wood and a clay, an animal of his choice. He decides to take a cow, and while he's at it, he's rearranging his animals a bit. Red takes the tanner, so he can get three leather. Yellow takes the carpenter. He wants to build a new stable. So it's one grain and two clay. And then he decides to turn this into a piece of leather clothing and to visit Hage. And for that he has to give up one of his fields. And he decides to get rid of one flax field. And that gives him one food. And finally Red takes the rain ride. He decides not to build a peat boat and just a vehicle. He wants a new of these carts. So that's all of his five wood and one horse. Then he uses this vehicle to make a set of wool clothing and this one to make a set of leather clothing. And then he decides to import one peat. And then we're in inventorying. So we unload our vehicles. Animals breed. Red gets a new horse. Yellow gets one of everything. Everybody still only gets one wool, and everybody has to pay three food. Then we're in turn seven, and for a change, nobody selected a summer action, so the starting player will switch over to red. The red player takes the trader, he decides to take a brick, and he also gets a grain and a piece of leather. The yellow player realizes that he has too many ongoing projects to be able to finish them all within the next three rounds. He would very much like to build one of the big buildings, but the problem is the three timber and the three clay. First he would have to collect the resources and then he would have to refine them. And for that his vehicles are simply not good enough because he only has two spaces. So maybe it was a mistake taking the fancy carriage with the double space. Then he has three stables that he would like to upgrade into bigger ones because that's a difference in four points for each of them. Then for example there's the joiner which would give him one horse for each plow and two peat for each peat boat. So that would be two horses and four peat. This inn down here would allow him to transform up to three of his fields into forests. So that would be six points by themselves. And then for example the woodworker or Turner would allow him for each forest to cut two peat and get the wood. So that would be a nice combo as well. But he's missing the building materials. First he takes the carpenter and decides to build this carpenter's workshop. It'll cost him any one building material and a grain. Pays the grain and the wood. Puts it over here. 
And this will allow him to upgrade a stable into a bigger one at any time for clay and for food. And normally this process would first of all cost an action and then two clay. So he's basically saving a clay, he has to pay four food on top of that, but he gets to do it for free, it doesn't cost an action. Red takes the builder and decides to build this, well, textile or clothing shop. It costs a clay and any two different sets of clothing. He has a clay and a piece of wool and leatherware. And apart from giving nine points, he now gets one of each of the different textiles. One wool, one leather, and one linen. Yellow takes the clay worker and gets four clay. Red takes the lumberjack and gets four wood. Yellow wanted to take the lumberjack as well, so he goes down to the seasonal worker. He has to pay two food. And then he gets three wood. Red takes the colonist. Then he has to decide how to load his vehicles. He wants to get two pieces of timber and a brick. So he has to pay this one. And then he decides to put one piece of wool on there and to also import one piece of peat. So he's getting a little behind on his traveling and trading plans. Again, yellow would have liked to take the colonist. So he takes the warden. He doesn't get a horse, but he gets to flip the tile. As for his vehicles, he decides to turn one wood into timber and then trade with Leah, so he can give up one flax, a cow, and any piece of clothing for a total of 13 food. Then it's November and we do the inventorying. This is put over here. Then milking. Red player doesn't get anything. And since yellow has three sheep and four cows, he gets his usual three. Then harvesting. Then everybody has to pay three food. And two peat, and they neglected that a little bit this round. Red can pay at least one, and then he has to pay a wood. And unfortunately, yellow has to pay two wood. Then it's round number eight. The starting player will flip. Yellow takes the wood supplier, has to pay a food, and he wants to build a building. The joiner. It'll cost him two timber and five grain. Then he gets one horse for each plow, so that's two. And two peat for each peat boat, so that's four. Red takes the animal breeder, so he gets two grain, a sheep and a horse. Yellow takes the dike warden, so first he gets to upgrade something. It decides to turn this cart into a horse cart. And then he gets to build one dike. So that's... Minus one victory points gone. Red decides to build a building. He has to pay two food. He wants to build the saddlery or saddle maker. To make some space he has to move the horses into the park. It costs two timber and three pieces of leather. And it allows him to cut one peat for each horse. He has five. So that takes care of all of these. And then he can increase his flashing beams by one. Yellow takes the trader. He gets to cut one peat and he gets an animal, a wood and a clay. And he decides to take another sheep. Red takes the lumberjack and gets four wood. Yellow takes the building material supplier. He gets two skins, a wood and a clay. He decides to get three pieces of brick from clay. And then for this empty spot, he decides to visit and trade with Norton. He doesn't have any wool clothes. He doesn't want to give up a sheep, but he doesn't want to give up a peat boat for five. Red takes the rain ride. He doesn't want to build a peat boat, but he does want to build a vehicle. And he decides to go for the fancy one this time. So that's four wood and two horses. Red decides to put this piece of leather on here, piece of linen on here, timber. Then he decides to visit Hagen, so he has to go up a field. And he also decides to trade with Emden, but only by giving up one peat for three food. So that's four food from trading altogether. 
Then it's inventorying. So first of all, vehicles are unloaded. This is put over here. Then before the breathing, the yellow player decides to use his carpenter's workshop to replace all his stables with the bigger ones. So for three stables, that'll cost him three clay and twelve food. And there are only three of these bigger stables. So they're all gone now. And then since each of them can hold six, he decides to place four in each of them. Now Yellow could have actually kept one of his stables around to upgrade it into a depot later on. But the thing is the depot can't hold animals. And its effect will be that at the end game scoring, the number for goods will be doubled. However, only wool and food are currently in an area where they actually score points. So it's two points, which would be doubled to four, which is not worth not getting the bigger stable. And then in the breeding phase, since every two couples in a stable will give one baby, he'll actually get two baby sheep, two baby horses, and two baby cows. Yellow decides to move the horses out here, move the sheep in so they can breed. Then he gets one wool, but yellow gets three. And then everybody has to pay three food. And we're going into the last round, and yellow will be the starting player. Yellow takes the carpenter. He wants to build this in two different building materials and nine food. First, he gets another cattle, and then he can cut one peat per cattle. So that would actually be seven, but there's only three left. Red selects the builder. He wants this bakery. It'll cost one timber and one clay. And then he can, for each of his ovens, turn two grain and one flax into eight food. He has three ovens, so that's six grain, two, three flax into 24 food. So that's 13, and another 11 is 24. Yellow takes the seasonal worker, he has to pay two food. He only has one, so first he has to get some. He decides to trade with Dornum, for that he has to give up a plow, which is three victory points, but hopefully it will be worth it, so that gives him eight food. Then he can pay the two. And then he would actually like to build another inn, so Two different building materials and another nine food. He's at seven now, so he also decides to trade with Empton but only give up one peat for another three food. Then he can pay the nine and build this in, and it allows him to replace up to three fields with forests. Red takes the wool weaver, he can generate up to five. Wool and fabric. He only has three wool, but he can get two more. Yellow takes the clay worker, so he gets four clay. Red takes the trader, takes a cow, grain, and a piece of leather. Yellow takes a master action. He gets three upgrades, but first he upgrades his workbenches for two clay. So now he has still three upgrades remaining, although he only has clay, more specifically he has three clay remaining, so let's see what's possible here. He can upgrade his slaughtering tables, why not upgrade his pottery discs as well, so that's four clay altogether. And then he decides to fill the last spot in his cart with a brick. And finally Red simply takes the warden, gets an upgrade action and upgrades the peat boat into plow. He decides to visit Bremen. He can give up one more. He doesn't get any food for it, but it's one of the five different trading options. And also that makes go away the minus four victory points. Then he decides to visit Aurich by giving up a piece of leather. He gets four food. 
Then for this space he decides to import one peat and then he decides to fill this space with a piece of wool. Then we can unload the vehicles. Then milking. Red doesn't have any space left for food. Yellow has six sheep and seven cows, so it gets five food. Then harvest. Red gets one grain. Yellow gets a grain and three wood. And then everybody has to feed and heat. So three food, two peat, two peat, and three food. And then it's the end of the game, so we can go into the final scoring. And while the game will come with a scoring pad, I will have to use this. So let's start. First we have clothing and building materials. For yellow, that's easy. He has three and a half points. Red has seven, nine, plus seven and a half is sixteen and a half. Then we have the equipment in the barn. Yellow has four, plus five is nine. Red has two, three, seven, ten. Next up is travel experience. Yellow has eight, and so does red. Then with the tools. Yellow has three, plus one is four, plus four is eight. Red has one, and four is five, and two is seven, and five is twelve, and four is sixteen. Then we have goods on the track. Yellow has wool up in the area, so that's one point. But he has a peat, so he can still trade it in with the boat. So it's actually two. And red gets two plus three, five. Then we have points on the home board. Yellow has 10, 16, 21, 24, 26, 28, 30, 36, 42, 48, 49, 50, 56, 54. Red has 15, 22, 24, 28, 29, 35, 43, 52, minus 3, is 49. Then animals. And the way this works is that you first take the kind that you have the least. So for the yellow player that's sheep. And then each one of those is worth two points. So that's 12. Then you take the next group and this is the cows. And each one of those is worth one point. So that's seven. And then finally the third category, in this case the horses, is simply worth nothing. So altogether he has 19 points for animals. Red has one cow, that's two, and then either three sheep or three horses, that's three, for a total of five. And finally we have the resource shortcomings or bottlenecks. Luckily none of the players had anything to report there, so it can just tally up the points. And the final result is 109.5 points for red and 103.5 points for yellow, making red the overall winner. And that was one full game of the fields of Ali. Before we wrap this up, let me just show you two actions that weren't used in this game at all. One is the potter, where you would, for each pottery disc, be able to turn one clay into three food and one peat. And the other one was the butcher or slaughter, where for each slaughtering table you would turn one animal into three food and two skins. But for each cow that you slaughter, you actually get one food more. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Ale Erde or Fields of Ale. And you've probably seen that, yes, this is a complex game. You don't want to know how much time I spent thinking about the different turns. First of all, as I said before, you have the thing the two different seasons, that you can't take any action you want to, so you have to plan ahead. And I did mention this in the walkthrough, but the way that the actions are associated with the different seasons is actually quite thematic, because, of course, in the summer it's easier to go outside and cut peat, dig clay, build buildings and these kind of things, while in the winter you do the stuff you do indoors, butchering, pottery, building new vehicles, and so on and so on. Talking about the vehicles, if you have a big fleet of vehicles and you have a big fleet of vehicles early on, then you can get the advanced building materials, you can turn textiles into, into clothing that will give you points, you can visit all the cities, you get the food, but of course you also have to think about how to use each vehicle in any given round, what has to happen immediately, what can still wait for another round. You have the tools, which basically require that you put actions and resources into them and you don't get an immediate benefit apart from the victory points but it'll make your other actions more effective and you have the typical problem do you go for the actions first and just get a little bit but it gets you started or do you 
build up and upgrade first and then the actions might get more powerful later on but you're not doing so much in the beginning then of course the buildings which apart from the four ones that give you any tile abilities simply give you a benefit exactly at the time that you build them so you have to again time that moment very well and again you have the problem do you want to build it early because then you've built it and it can't be taken away from you and you can focus on other things or are you waiting because then the bonus you get might be even better and this way it's of course very reminiscent of Glass Road and also a little bit Aura et Labora because in that game if you have a prior free then you can use a building immediately once you've built it. Talking about Aura et Labora, Glass Road and of course Agricola and Le Havre. If you compare this game with the previous ones, two things are absent in this game. You had resources piling up. At the start of the round, new resources would come out until somebody took them and you'd have to figure out when it's a good time to actually do this. In Fields of Arle, nothing is building up, so you can't just wait for something to happen. You have to be more proactive. The other thing is, in this game, you don't have any buildings or other things that give you end of game victory bonus points. Like if you have this building then you'll score two points for each building of a certain category or these kind of things. Which again is interesting because one might argue you don't have a goal to build towards so of course you want to have the most points but there's not an end game building that will give you a strategy. The strategy has to come from seeing what buildings are out there figuring out how they might interact with each other and combo off each other and then hopefully you will be able to build all of them. In this game you don't have any random events during the game. There's a randomized setup with lots of variability. I think I haven't played the game often enough that each game will play very differently. But as I was saying there are no random elements in the game so basically you have to plan what you're doing and you have to plan it very well. There is a total of 72 actions in the game, plus 9 inventory phases, plus end game scoring and so on and so on. And the playtime for 2 players is 120 minutes. So if we put these two numbers into consideration, that means that each turn will on average last more than a minute. And mechanically speaking, turns are fast. You take a pawn, you put it somewhere and you resolve the action. So where does time go? Into considering what you want to do, planning ahead and also for the first couple of games figuring out what the hell this is about and how you can do well in the game. Okay, so I hope my walkthrough and final thoughts have helped you in forming a decision whether this is something you'd be interested in or not. As I said, it can be picked up in Essen in, I think, both language versions and then we're already done. So, as always, thanks for watching, have fun playing and until next time. Bye-bye.